Hello, and welcome to the Sequence and Software AG demonstration. Today, we'll spend about five minutes on a couple of slides to provide the necessary context. Then we'll move into a deep dive demonstration for the integration of the Web Methods API Gateway and the Sequence API Security Platform. First of all, a quick bit of background across Sequence Security, the world's first and only API platform with a prevention first approach, monitoring 5 billion or more API transactions a day, protecting 2 billion or more user accounts. And with all that data, analyzing and threat scoring hundreds of millions of IP addresses. Sequence Security is a venture capitalist backed firm, and all of the venture capitalists have a great deep security pedigree. Software AG is also a global company working with the Fortune 100 and helping them consolidate and manage and bring APIs under governance. So first of all, a little bit about the demonstration architecture. What you can see here is, is that we've decided for this demonstration to deploy everything as a SaaS based solution. However, hybrid models and on-premise models are also available. We've elected to use a design pattern with the CDN out front, although this is not a requirement. And the CDN is sending top level domains into the sequence dedicated security platform, which is dedicated on a per customer basis. The sequence SaaS tenant is built of control plane elements, REST APIs, and as well, the inline defender. The inline defender is a cloud native platform fully elastically scalable for seasonal or other requirements such as hype sales. The Defender will then exit traffic via an ACK gateway, which will move on to the Software AG Cloud. In the Software AG Cloud, we have a Web Methods API gateway deployed, which will of course forward traffic into the customer environment, as well as sending logs to the sequence dedicated SaaS tenant and the relevant REST API endpoint. This will allow sequence to ingest all of the API gateway logs and therefore provide a runtime risk assessment and cataloging of all APIs that are consolidated through the Web Methods API gateway. We'll run this demonstration in two parts. The first part where we'll onboard a brand new application into the web methods gateway. We'll configure all of that information and show that the responses and requests go to API Sentinel. We'll then move across to API Sentinel to define and identify any API runtime risks of those transactions and responses that the gateway has forwarded to us. The second part of the demonstration, we will identify a risky API that has yet to be not deployed on the API gateway and has not been brought under governance. We'll look at how we could then mitigate any risks across that API and furthermore, use the information to bring it under governance and bring it into the inventory onto the managed web methods API gateway. With that, we'll jump into the first part and move to the live demonstration. Here, what you can see is we have the Web Methods API Gateway, and now we're going to onboard a brand new API. So I'm going to create an API. I'm going to give it a name, which is Firefly 3. and uh, it is an open API specification, version 1.5.2. And I'll import the specifications from my specification store. And we'll now create this. This will import my API specifications into the Web Methods API gateway. At this point, of course, nothing will be deployed. We're just making sure that the specifications can be imported and that the gateway is ready to receive traffic. And we'll, of course, classify and identify all of the API st structure that is available. 
Once it's imported, we'll now go to look at the policies. And in the policies, you'll note the first thing is that it's uh, supporting an HTTP protocol. One of the various security elements available on the Web Methods API Gateway is to obviously restrict traffic to HTTPS. We will save that. And then the other thing to check once we've saved this would be that the traffic monitoring has been set up such that as per the diagram, the Web Methods API Gateway can send all traffic logs, all API logs to API Sentinel. We can check that in the traffic monitoring section. And what we have deployed here is a global policy. This global policy means any new APIs that are onboarded will automatically be forwarded to the Sequence API Sentinel platform. And that you can see here. The last element we need to do is activate the API and we'll soon be ready for action. So now we'll be able to ingest traffic on this API and all logs will be forwarded to API Sentinel. So what I'm gonna do right now is start up the traffic and we will move across to API Sentinel to visualize this and look for any runtime risks. In the API Sentinel dashboard, what you can see is, is now that we're starting to pick up the traffic and discover all of the endpoints associated with our newly onboarded Fly, Firefly 3 version 1.52 application. If I just refresh this screen, you can see that the endpoints are steadily increasing. We have the ability to filter all of the runtime risk analysis based on time range. And we're looking at the last 15 minutes because we just onboarded this application. Contact information, assuming this is uh, in the API specifications themselves, then we'll be able to filter based on that. Any tags associated with the API specification and of course, for which we've seen runtime traffic for. The servers we can filter on as well. This is important because most of our customers will have hundreds, if not thousands of APIs. So being able to filter based on these is critical. Not only can you filter on them, but you could also have role-based access control implemented such that you only see the applications and servers that you are responsible for. Last but not least, you can filter based on uh, risk categories, which we'll go into in more detail right now. So let's refresh the, the dashboard and we'll start to see that we're picking up more and more endpoints at this stage. So thinking about the risk categories, let's move across to the sensitive data exposure dashboard and start with that level of risk. In the sensitive data exposure dashboard, what you'll see is we'll identify two APIs across seven different endpoints and 2000 transactions in the last 15 minutes have been exposing sensitive data. We can identify the top endpoints that have been exposing data, the top expressions that have been exposing data as well. This is not an extensive list, but most of the top uh, five or six. And we can identify where the data is being exposed. So in the path, in the body, headers. And of course, if you see sensitive data being linked in the headers, this is immediately a red flag because many things across the internet are indeed logging headers. So it's not just leaked outside of your own environment, but could also be logged all across the internet. We also see what response codes the application's giving in the cases where sensitive data has been exposed. Also, across which organization was the data uh, request coming from? And clearly, if you're, uh, let's say, a European customer or even a US customer and you're seeing traffic from Korea, you may have a few questions. And the IP addresses, which would feed into our threat scoring analysis that I highlighted at the beginning, where we identify and, and rate all IP addresses as, a, as to their risk uh, accessing the system. If I now filter on leaked credentials, we'll dive into a specific expression that is being exposed. So now you can see that I'm filtered on leaked credentials. And here we again see the top endpoints specific to this 
um, data leakage. We can see in this case, all of the response codes are at 200 and it's 100% being leaked from the, uh, from the body. If I want to look at a specific endpoint, it will refill to the dashboard for me and I can view the details. This will take me back to my API inventory where I may have hundreds or thousands of applications and directly to the endpoint where sensitive data is exposed. And what we start to see here is the three separate risk categories across which the, this is a, um, a high risk endpoint. First of all, we see that some of the elements are out of specification. This means they are not defined in the API specifications and would be considered out of specification. Furthermore, the endpoint has no authentication method detected which of course would be a challenge, especially with the sensitive data being leaked. And last but not least, we can identify that sensitive data is detected in the response body. And if I wanted to take a look at this, I'd be able to look down in the response body and see exactly where it's being leaked here in the email uh, association. Of course, what I would have also identified is that every time we're getting the 200 response, as we saw in the uh, sensitive data dashboard. So with that, we've been able to identify three elements of risk across this, which is schema nonconformance, access control, and sensitive data exposure. It's important to note that the API specifications have been imported into this platform. Typically, this is done via the CICD pipeline. We have a REST API endpoint that can in, allow us to ingest the new and latest API specifications at build time. So if I go back to my inventory where we have all of our APIs cataloged, this now concludes the first part of the demonstration where we have onboarded a brand new application We've identified risky behavior in runtime. So we've identified access control, schema nonconformance, and sensitive data. We'll now move into the second part of the demonstration where we have an API which is currently not under governance and we don't have specifications for it. In API Sentinel, this appears as discovered. And we can see all of the endpoints that have been discovered. And in the middle here, what I've identified is through the color coding, a potentially risky endpoint, which of course could have been filtered across the top here or via the risk categories themselves. And if I want to know what the risk is, it's pretty straightforward. It's spelled out to me here. And I can identify that this is, there is some fraudulent behavior on the user endpoints. And this is business logic abuse. So even once you have all of your APIs under governance, you have uh, the hygiene under control, access control is not broken, or you have strong authentication, there is still a chance that your APIs can be attacked. And quite often the mechanism would be business logic abuse, abusing the application, but using it in the way it was intended. So that means it's syntactically correct and no signature-based system is gonna pick that out. In order to identify what this might look like, we'll move across into the um, business logic abuse dashboard from uh, the bot defense in CQAI. In this dashboard, what we'll notice is that we first of all identify all traffic in a timeline that is either legitimate or attack level traffic. And we can see that clearly here. Further down, we have more details around what the business logic abuse may look like. First thing you'll note is that I'm selecting a fingerprint overview here, and I have a list of all my fingerprints down the left, which shows me the tooling that is being used. So the fingerprint is a representation of what tool is being used. That is critical because we know and understand that typically, any business logic abuse will rotate IP addresses very, very fast. So if you can identify them by an alternative mechanism, this allows you to both track and mitigate in real time 
without regardless of how many IP addresses and locations they may rotate across. In order to identify business logic abuse, we analyze every single transaction across four pillars. Those four pillars are tools, infrastructure, credentials, and behavior. And let's pick out some examples here. For example, our pop-off machine learning model has said this is a suspicious request and there's no clash with any legitimate browser. What that means is whatever is being projected here, for the, in this case, it's Firefox, actually our machine learning model has identified it's not behaving like that at all. In the infrastructure, we've also identified that the a number of requests are coming from suspicious sources identified in our network IQ database, which I highlighted at the beginning of the presentation across what, hundreds of millions of IP addresses, we have this easy scoring mechanism, IP threat score red, IP threat score yellow, where we can identify suspicious requests from within our extensive database. And what we also identify here through another machine learning model, again, out of the box, is that there's a login pattern that is consistent with account verification attempts. So there's lots of system rules that identify on a per request basis, how risky is this? And we build for every single request, a confidence score. The higher this confidence score is, based on all of the alert triggers we saw down below, suggest whether this is indeed malicious traffic and potentially someone trying to abuse the business logic of an API. So let's look in detail about how we could mitigate that on the endpoint that we discovered in our API Sentinel dashboard. And what I've done here is I filtered on the application pet store and I can see that we are actually injecting uh, headers for a number of the requests. If I slip, switch my uh, view here to the policy, I've identified I have a tier three policy that is blocking based on pop-off model again, suspicious request with no legitimate browser, and indeed another suspicious uh, activity, lack of user agent rotation, and the action field is the fingerprint. So if the attacker rotates across multiple IP addresses, 100, 100 million, it doesn't really matter. We'll still pick them up and be able to block them by the fingerprint, uh, which is far more effective and allows real-time mitigation. Header injection is just one option, but if we were to go to the, and look at the policy settings, we can identify in here that we have many more options available to us. We can straight up block, we can send a deceptive response from our honey trap mechanism to give a fake uh, and decoy response. We can also rate limit or just simply allow for logging purposes. We can also set a secondary action on all policies, which allows us to report to external platforms, let's say via REST API or syslog. So with that, we've identified a rogue API that has been uh, onboarded to, to the platform, but is not yet under governance, we can then use the information from this platform to build out API specifications. So if I move across to API Sentinel again, here in my inventory, I have my discovered application and on any of the endpoints, I can of course see the server involved. And what I can do is, is we can communicate with the application team to ask for their API specifications, which can be ingested uh, directly into the platform. So we can go into API definitions and we could import a new API or a new API could be ingested, as I mentioned earlier, via our REST API endpoint. And of course, this discovered API can also be onboarded into the Web Methods API gateway. If in whatever circumstances, the application do not have um, an API schema for this particular application, then we can generate this from the runtime data directly out of API Sentinel. With that, we conclude the demonstration. So in summary, of course, APIs are everywhere. With the digitalization of many, many applications, the proliferation of APIs is becoming um, huge. 
So if you think about that and remember that we're analyzing 5 billion transactions on a daily basis, what we've identified is that on average, 20% of those are actually malicious. So revert that back and think, how many API endpoints do you have? How much traffic is associated to them? And what might that 20% mean to you? Of course, what sensitive data could be being exposed across those APIs? And then if you do identify malicious behavior, business logic abuse, sensitive data exposure, access control problems, then can you prevent any attacks in real time across all your APIs natively? If you would like to find the answers to these questions, please sign up for your free API security assessment by going to either of the links below. And with that, it's been a real pleasure and I wish you a fine day going forward.